Welcome to Making Sense of the Madness. We've got a great show lined up for you today. We have Larry Klayman, who is not just the founder of Freedom Watch, but also Judicial Watch. I've been following his work for a very, very long time. We also got Karen Dansky to talk about the trans agenda when involving children and Kamala Harris. You're not going to want to miss it. Buckle up and get ready to make sense of the madness. are back we are now joined by larry clayman and first of all sir let me say it is a pleasure to have you on the program i actually have you in two of my documentary films loose change final cut and uh fabled enemies for your work on 9 11 all the way back in the day when you were you know representing whistleblowers who then were really persecuted and prosecuted by the system robert wright i believe barry carmody and others uh if my memory right. serves me correct and, you know, before we even get into what you're doing now, one of the things that Trump has said, now I don't know whether he's going to keep his word, didn't keep his word on the JFK documents the first time, mentioned it this time, but he also says we're going to get the 9-11 documents. Now, just for people that may be unaware, and I would say that's probably most of the populace, these people that you were representing knew how the money with, within this bin Laden network actually moved through an individual called Yasin Qadi. And there was an actual operation called Vol Vulgar Betrayal that they tried to put into the public arena and, and basically were demonized for it. And one of, the, one of the things I remember that you said in that press conference in front of all these people is you said, you know, I, I don't know why, but I do know that the Bushes vacation with the Bin Ladens. So we, could we just start there because your career actually starts way further back than that but especially yeah. on the 9 11 issue you know what are your thoughts modern day and do you think trump will actually keep his word if he gets in on this i don't and i'll tell you why you know the cia most people believe is the entity that arranged for the assassination of john f kennedy they believe that kennedy was soft on communism after after he cut a deal with castro over the Cuban Missile Crisis and basically abandoned Cubans from Miami on the beaches of Havana. So I think Trump may fear that the CIA, CIA may try to take him out. And let's go fast forward to what happened with that attempted assassination in Butler, Pennsylvania. I have reason to believe, given the fact that everything's been covered up all these years, whether it's Kennedy's assassination, this is by the FBI and the intelligence agencies, whether it's the assassination attempt on Ronald Reagan, or we believe some young guy named Hinckley was simply in love with Jodie Foster, and that was the motive. Uh, and Richard by the Jewell, way, Larry, 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 just because you brought up Hinckley, I really got to remind people, Hinckley hasn't been in jail for years. He was under house arrest for some time. He doesn't even have that anymore. He's touring the country with a guitar, and he's got a social media account. And by the way, you know, I mentioned that Bush's and bin Laden's connection. Neil Bush was supposed to have dinner with Hinckley's uh, brother the next day. Those families were connected. You know, when you talk about the Central Intelligence Agency, again, for those no, that don't right. know their history, you know, uh, George Bush was the head of the Central Intelligence Agency and more than likely an operative long before that, where his father, Prescott, was very involved in intelligence. I'm sorry for the interruption. But Go ahead. To veer off a little bit, why do you think George W. Bush kept Tenet as the CIA director to keep the bodies buried in terms of what went on when his dad was running the CIA? Let's go further. Richard Jewell covered up Atlanta Olympic bombing. Uh, the guy who created the massacre in uh, Las Vegas, uh, is they, the FBI went into his apartment in Mesquite, Nevada, cleaned it out, uh, Stephen Paddock, and we don't know the motive for that. Martin Luther King, the family doesn't believe that James Earl Ray was the assassin, the King family itself. I can go on and on and on. So I think that Trump, uh, being a realist in many respects, is fearful that the intelligence agencies, if he s exposes what went on, whether it's 9-11 or anything else, may try to take him out. That, that's my guess. 
Well, well, let me just say this. I, I think they did just try to take him out, obviously. I mean, all yes, the Yes, I Walmart believe that hurt. too. Yeah, and I don't think he's out of the woods. I don't. First of all, I don't think he's out of the woods if he even somehow wins the election. And, you know, we got to get him sworn in. And then even after the fact, God knows where this ends up. But, but let's talk about 9-11 in particular for a moment. We will get to Kamala Harris, I promise you. Sure. But for me, and it's what I've been saying, you know, after starting to question 9-11 within the first six months to a year seriously and then going on, this is that pivotal moment where all of our foreign and domestic policy is pushed in this direction based on the official narrative of 9-11. Now, you can go back to the first Bush administration, even under the Reagan administration, which really probably is the first Bush administration, let's be honest with ourselves, where the continuity of government program is expanded through the National Programs Office, people like Rumsfeld, Cheney, very involved in that. Um, after the terrorist attacks of 93 and 95, First uh, World Trade Center, Oklahoma City, respectively, you get ramped up with this terrorism stuff. Things like the Patriot Act are already kind of written up. They're not on the books yet. 9-11 is that catalyst. And then you not only have the Patriot Act, you have um, the N National Defense Authorization Act, Military Commissions Act, you have Homeland Security, you then, then get fusion centers with Homeland Security, and you build a security state that it is massive in nature. When you were working on 9-11, what were your thoughts on what actually happened there, especially with your insider knowledge of the FBI aspect and then other surrounding issues with intelligence such as able danger? You know, I can't give you a definitive answer, but you just raised a lot of very important issues. Is that there was no way that the World Trade Center was going to melt like that, given the way it was supposed to have been constructed. And that does suggest that there may have been an inside job involved to create a condition to be able to take control of the American people and to conduct mass surveillance. I do not believe at the highest reaches of the Saudi government that they were involved. I really don't. The Saudis are our allies. They're, they're intelligent people. There may have been rogue elements you know, with regard to the bin Ladens, but I don't believe that they were. However, George W. Bush wasn't going to take any chances because his family was very close with the bin Laden family and got them out of the country at the time. So there are no real good answers, but I think you raised a very interesting point, is that did the government, much like Franklin Roosevelt essentially allowed Pearl Harbor to happen, did we create this condition that there would be an attack, either an inside job or otherwise, on the World Trade Center to be able to take control through mass surveillance on the American people. And although in 2014 I enjoined the National Security Agency twice under Obama and Biden for illegal surveillance uh, under the Fourth Amendment in violation of the Fourth Amendment, the reality is that George W. Bush had started it long before this mass surveillance on the American people. And in fact, uh, an interesting story, Comey at that point, who wasn't quite as corrupt as he is today, uh, reportedly went to go see uh, W and said, you know, I, I'm not going to put up with this uh, with regard to the mass surveillance. And he was rebuffed at the time. Uh, Comey, you know, had a, a lower position at that point uh, in the Justice Department. So these are all very interesting questions. But you know what? The bottom line is you'll never get the truth out of government. It's the same thing they say about lawyers. How do you tell if they're lying if they're moving their mouth? And, and I happen to be a lawyer, and that's why I started Judicial Watch back in uh, 1994, on July 29th, because I saw just how corrupt the legal profession had become, particularly with regard to federal judges, lawyers, everyone else. And it was basically to serve as a watchdog over the legal profession. I then turned it against itself and used the courts, because at that point you did have a few honest judges, very few today on the federal bench. They're all politicized, mostly all political hacks on both sides of the aisle. But in those days, you might find a good one, like I did with Judge Royce Lambert in the District of Columbia. And he made many good decisions on my behalf. But all these questions will are good to ask, but you'll never get the truth out of the government. So, you know, you mentioned lawyers, and I often say it is synonymous with liars. No offense to the present company uh, intended. When you talk about no, Saudi Arabia. I have to deal with them every day. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm the most anti-lawyer person you'll find. Okay. 
Well, I, I, th this has been a great conversation so far, and I'm sure it will continue to be. So when we talk about Saudi Arabia, it, you know, my follow-up film, instead of those physical anomalies, you know, you talked about the World Trade Center and the way it fell, et cetera. That was big and loose change when we made that. But I wanted to do one with the backdrop, with all the players, whether it be Saudi Arabia, um, Israel, Pakistan in particular. And, and that's the thing. When we talk about money movement, there's really no denial that Pakistan is not only involved, right? But uh, when you move that money through General Mahmoud Ahmed uh, by Omar Saeed Sheikh, who's the guy that they convict of the Daniel Pearl murder, and they later overturn that, last I've seen in the press, he's in a safe house in Britain somewhere. Uh, but that w money gets wired to Ada the week before these attacks. And then this guy is in D.C. that entire week. And he's you mentioned George Tenet, one of the people he's meeting with. Condoleezza Rice meeting with her. She denied that, by the way, and there was an official record of it after the fact that came out. Uh, but more, to, I mean, met with Biden after the fact. But on the morning of 9-11 is meeting with uh, Bob Graham, who I have in the film talking about that meeting, and Porter Goss. They write up the initial congressional investigation into 9-11 where the 28 pages are redacted. And then Goss becomes the head of the CIA afterwards. I mean, if that's not outright corruption, and, and you know, as you mentioned, you know, the, the Saudi Arabian money movement, I understand with Robert Wright, et cetera, and how that moved. I think that's one part of the aspect, but that's really a cover for operatives, et cetera. Same thing with Pakistan, but it's directly through intelligence. I mean, let's look at the direct con uh, connections, if you even believe the official versions. Dan Rather in January does that piece where they go to the Pakistani hospital where they say that bin Laden is being uh, protected by military members and receiving dialysis there on the eve of the attack. If you believe the bin Laden raid, where is he? He's in Pakistan. He's right next to a military base. So I, I've got to get your take uh, on the Pakistani well, uh, in, involvement mm, in this. Go ahead. Um, Pakistan, you know, is, is a special case. Of course, <clears throat> they uh, play both sides of the street. Of course, most countries do in that respect. And they're still involved in this. I mean, I, it's a long story. We won't use it here. But I represented somebody who was involved with the individual who played a role in taking out bin Laden, uh, an American agent, a CIA agent, uh, many years ago. And, you know, they play both sides of the street, and that's the CIA. They'll even sacrifice our own to create an impression among terrorist interests that they're on our side, or their side, rather, and, uh, you know, so that is the role of the CIA uh, to deceive. And the tragedy is they deceive the American people as well. They're also incompetent, by the way. Uh, they don't match up to MI-16 in Great Britain or even 15. Uh, it's basically incompetent. They haven't solved one attempted assassination or major matter in decades. And they don't want to solve it because they're usually involved in it. So that's the bottom line. Fast forward to Saudi Arabia today. Saudi Arabia is next to Israel, probably our best ally. The prince is extremely progressive in a positive sense of the word progressive. Uh, he has allowed even religious uh, freedom in that country in many respects. You even have a rabbi that, that is out, allowed to practice there right now. So it's a different country. But I do believe that uh, with regard to the bin Laden family, that was done at a lower level. I don't think it went up to the king. They're too smart to do something like that. And, of course, these are issues which, you know, we'll never really know in any event with regard to what the United States discloses. And if I can get a little bit off topic, uh, look at COVID-19. Uh, you know, the fact is, and we've indicted Fauci under Citizens Grand Jury. We've convicted him. You can go to freedomwatchusa.org and see that for negligent homicide at a minimum, is that he gave the seeds of COVID-19, the SARS virus, to that Wuhan lab in China. He knew that that was a bioweapons lab because, in fact, we sent the seeds from our own bioweapons lab in Fort Detrick, Maryland. All these countries violate international treaty. And as a result, uh, we saw what happened in that regard. That's been covered up, too. You, you cannot tell me that the NSA grabs every piece of communications worldwide, keeps it for five years in a supercomputer in Colorado, doesn't know the origins of COVID-19. Covered up. And why is it covered up? Because we gave the Chinese the murder weapon. 
We gave it. Well, to let me tell you this, Larry. I, I think that not only just gave it, it, it's a partnership, even from the public information that we have. For instance, uh, Dazic had to uh, testify behind closed doors. And if you just read that write up, you know, they talk about New York and uh, universities, they talk about Chapel Hill in there, they talk about the Department of Energy. And uh, a lot of people don't realize the Department of Energy, when we had all that human experimentation. Uh, revelation and admission during the Clinton administration was a huge part of that as well. So look, to me, once it was confirmed that the virus had HIV in it, there was no doubt that it was a quote unquote bioweapon. And then all the paperwork um, not only goes back to the United States and China, but a, a cooperation. And then, isn't that really the issue? Because once you start getting involved with the government, especially the military, right? Because we could talk about COVID-1984, but then the hate and lie shots. I mean, you look at the mRNA project, and that's all the way back in 2013 via Moderna and DARPA. D Moderna has no products or anything. It's it's a partnership for countermeasures under the ADEPT and PROTECT pro program. It's given as the only solution, real solutions, and, and medicine that's been practiced literally not hundreds but thousands of years, things like vitamin supplementation, vitamin C, D, forget about the others. That's all demonized and even criminalized in some cases. I mean, I think that's been a big wake-up call for people, but at the same time, it's so rapid that they lose themselves. And also, in an era of QAnon sense and people hoping for white hats and people to come in to save them, it, it causes, I think, this intermingling of reality um, versus what's really going on in a post-truth world. And when you point out those records, people either don't take it far enough or they obfuscate what's really happened we haven't had any accountability in my uh, opinion on an executive level since iran contra and i mean you could you could say scooter libby maybe got like a little slap on the wrist but then even trump pardoned him after the fact and in a large part when enron that was a scapegoat right that, that's minimal but even with iran contra those guys many cases got slaps on the wrist if they got convicted they got commuted pardoned after the fact ollie north became a superstar book deals oh, yeah. radio shows television interviews i mean that's what happened and that's in the you know late 80s that comes up we haven't had any accountability for almost 30 years it's in this the, country jason it's the scandal industry my second to the last book there was a sequel the last one the second to the last one was it takes a revolution forget the scandal industry that's what it's become it's a scandal industry to make money for the networks to make money for publications to make money for pundits etc but there's no reality in it the new book it takes a counter-revolution wake up america is the sequel and i go through the corruption on our federal bench in, in large measure there and, and why we need the clean house there it's a rat's nest i mean we see what's been happening but here's the bottom line is that we the american people who were lied to repeatedly just turn on the democratic convention for the latest example uh, you know this week it's one lie after another not not to say the republicans are pure either but what do we do? Do we sit there and look to the government to clean up the corruption? Uh, my former group, which I founded, of course, Judicial Watch, mostly just gets documents. I mean, that's fine. But the question is, what do you do with the documents when you get them? I mean, do you look to the government force, the rule of law? That's what my former colleagues do. The, what we have to do, and what I've been doing at Freedom Watch, and I want people to join our Justice League, is that we are taking peacefully and legally matters into our own hands. In 1992, the late Justice Antonin Scalia wrote a majority opinion in a case styled the United States versus Williams, where he ruled that the grand jury belongs to the American people, not the three branches of government. Consequently, uh, the Justice Department that came into being for the United States in 1870 is not exclusive, it's just simply complementary to the power of the people to enforce the rule of law ourselves. That's what Wyatt Earp did in the Old West and otherwise. And that's what we need to do today, peacefully and legally. So we have previously, and again, go to freedomwatchusa.org. I hope people will contribute with tax deductible contributions. We need it. The Republicans have siphoned off a lot with the political fundraising. You know, they want money, but then again, after they get it, they do little to nothing. The reality is, is that Freedom Watch commissioned citizens' grand juries. We indicted Joe Biden, Hunter Biden, and James Biden for bribery from communist China, Ukraine, and Russia. We indicted Fauci. 
We tried them all. The Bidens got 20 years each in the end, and Fauci got life, which he deserves because he's killed over 10 million people with his acts. So consequently, we can force it, uh, an issue here. In 48 states, there's the right of a citizen's arrest. We're not even going that far. We have now indictments and convictions, so we are petitioning law enforcement. I hope there'll be those who are courageous enough to do it, to go out and arrest Biden and arrest Hunter. He was on the stage yesterday. Can you believe that? Democratic National Convention, you know, showcasing his uh, criminal Biden family. Uh, and, and Fauci as well, is that we, the American people, need to rise up ourselves. We cannot depend on a political messiah. And as well-intentioned as President Trump may be, he is going up against the deep state. And that gets back to your first question. Why isn't he revealing this stuff? Because I think he knows that if he does, they'll try to kill him. Well, I also think that Vance may be a, a nod to that uh, newer tech bro kind of wave of military industrial complex as well. But that remains to be seen. We got to take a quick break. When we come back, I do want to talk about modern corruption. I want to talk about the Biden administration, this move for Kamala Harris, et cetera, and this new lawsuit with Larry Clayman. And we'll be back with more Making Sense of the Madness after this. The world is about to shift. Banks are going cashless globally with the emergence of central bank digital currency, which will bring with it programmable money and the ability to turn on or off your purchasing power based on your digital social profile. It's like the equivalent of spyware in your bank account. You need to get out of the system with the world's safest and most precious assets, silver and gold. Call Kirk Elliott Precious Metals at 720-605-3900. That's 720-605-3900. Looking to give your wardrobe an upgrade? Well, look no further. Here at God Country and Kin, we've got you covered from head to toe, from shoulder to shoulder, and everything in between. Introducing our brand new Patriotic Collection, designed to display your patriotic spirit with a stylish look that's sure to turn heads. And the best part is, you don't have to break the bank to be your best you. Why wait? Visit us online or in-store today and elevate your style with God Country and Kin. God Country and Kin, where patriotism meets style. Shop now. Visit the Patriot TV store and look for the God Country Kin banner to find the perfect outfit, shirt, accessory, or maybe a great hat. You can totally see yourself rocking this hat. I know you can. And check out all the great stuff we've got to show your patriotism at patriot.tv. Dot store. Click that link above that says store and join me there at the Patriot TV store. And we are back. So, you know, before we get to Kamala Harris, and I watched a lot of the DNC last night, extremely painful. They rolled out, you know, Ocasio-Cortez, Hillary Clinton. I saw Ashley Biden. Joe was very confused <laughs> and angry again. I mean, I mean, again, the guy had dementia before they installed him into office. And that's really what, what I want to get into. You know, you did a lot of work during uh, the second Bush administration. I don't think he was running much. He could still talk. He could still read. He he had a very competent staff, even if they were vipers underneath him. Wolfowitz, like I said, Rumsfeld, Cheney, Rove. The list goes on. When we when we get to this administration, Joe Biden, I used to call him Joey B, absolute gangster. And, you know, that's why he was the vice president. That's why there was massive corruption globally during that time period. By 2020, you could tell he had dementia. And not only do they install him, but they don't put anybody that actually does any work under him in Kamala Harris, right? There, there's no, she's no Dick Cheney, everybody. And then down the line, everybody is super unimpressive. Not that those people are necessarily You're impressive. Being too but, kind, Jason. But, You're oh, being well, too kind. It, uh, it's, well, let me it's say an, this. Here's the French. It's an effing freak show. That's what it is. Well, well, all right. So that's where I'm going with this. Like Blinken is the only guy that I see those dead sociopathic eyes that's actually on the trail. Everybody else just seems like a pushover, obviously not doing much. You know, I often talk about how, you know, I've been talking about the machines forever, but John Kerry, for instance, you know, 
I believe he won in 2004. I believe that was a rigged setup between two Yaley Skull and Bonesmen and distant cousins. He ran way more of the foreign policy because he was actually running foreign policy for this country and going overseas than Joe Biden or anybody else in that administration. I think they gave him like a czar position. So when you talk about this freak show, it's been tough to watch because I've seen levels of puppetry when we talk about the executive branch, but we've never seen anything like this, right? You know, you've never seen it. I mean, look at Alejandro Mayorkas. Okay, what a, I mean, the guy looks like Uncle Fester. I mean, my God, from the Adams family. I was going through TSA several months ago, and I said to the TSA person, a nice uh, black lady, I said, how can you stand looking at him all day long? He's on the monitor. And she says, I try not to. <laughs> no. And uh, then you've got uh, Buttigieg, okay, who poses, and, and I don't mean this in a discriminatory way, but he poses with his male wife in bed, in a hospital bed, as if he gave birth to two kids. I mean, the guy is a freak, okay, that's what he is. Even if you're, even if you're gay or lesbian or transgender or whatever, this guy is out of control. And then you've got the rest of them, Blinken, okay? And, and here's my, my beef, and let me say it in a, in a diplomatic way, because I'm of Jewish origin. I'm very proud of being Jewish. I'm a, a Zionist. But the Jewish left is extremely destructive, not just of this country, but of Israel. And they're fomenting anti-Semitism. And that scares me. So I keep explaining to people, these are not the Jewish people. You mentioned Blinken. He's a member of the Marxian Jewish left. And now, right now, he's trying to throw Israel under the bus. Okay, He's, frankly, a traitor to his own people. And that, to me, I take it to heart as black conservatives take to heart the left, you know, friends of mine like Alan Keyes and Armstrong Williams and others. Uh, and, and I say this because I don't want people to confuse them as being Jews. They're not. They are disciples of Karl Marx. And that's who Biden basically packed his administration with in large part. Janet Yellen, another example. Um, I can go right down the line. It's, it, it frankly is an embarrassment to me and my heritage. So where are we right now? Because I know you have this lawsuit with Kamala Harris. We, we also have this just kind of a, astounding way in which um, she's about to get the nomination, right? Like she's the focus of this thing. I was watching the DNC again last night. It's so bizarre. Let, let's just quickly go over the last three Democratic primaries, all right? Because the Democrats are always talking about saving democracy. 2016, Bernie Sanders won. Screwed him out of it. Gave it to Hillary Clinton. There were some lawsuits. There's no standing. All the evidence was there. 2020, you know, you just mentioned Pete Bootlicker and, you know, about a dozen others. They all dropped out in, in very timed and specific ways to allow Joe Biden to take that nomination. He wasn't winning in the beginning. He wasn't taking New Hampshire and all these states. That was a contrived thing. They took it to a new level in 2024 where you did have a viable uh, Democratic alternative with RFK Jr., right? That's somebody that could have challenged it. They I like, totally I like didn't uh, allow RFK him. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, they had totally didn't allow him into the system at all. They had no primary debates. They acted like they were going to have Joe Biden run, even though, again, if it wasn't clear dementia when he got in, by the end of this presidency, I mean, it was over the top, right? Well, I mean, you're getting to the point of the lawsuit I brought. Well, uh, this woman's got no as... votes. We're now at a point there's zero votes from any American citizen. And this person is about to be nominated for the president of the United States under the Democratic Party that screams about democracy, Larry. It's it's well, cartoon least... world. No, it is. It's 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 a never never land. And uh, I am a Florida citizen. I'm a Florida voter. Florida election laws are very strong. I participated in the Gore v. Bush case back in 2020. I was actually in the trial in a public interest capacity in Tallahassee. In Florida, a voter and a taxpayer can challenge uh, election conduct based on fraud or misconduct. And that's what I've done. I brought a lawsuit a few weeks ago. You can see it at freedomwatchusa.org. Again, I asked people for tax deductible contributions because we do need the help right now. And we are asking the court to declare that Kamala Harris is ineligible to be put on the ballot because she participated in a fraud in 2020 by defrauding the American people to believe that Joe Biden was fit mentally and physically to be president. The biggest fraud in American history. So these are the kinds of things that we can be doing. Now, will we get a judge 
who will stand there in the stead? I don't know. It's, it's very, very hard. I remember when I challenged Obama's birth certificate in Florida. We didn't say where he was born. They were just said that the thing's fraudulent and you should have to produce the original one before you register uh, as a presidential candidate. But the American people need to do whatever they can to use peaceful and legal means before some people, not you and me, but others will be in a situation where they take you know, matters into their own hands violently. And I believe this country is very close to it today. And for instance, if President Trump does win the election, you can expect the left to be out there with guns and everything else, basically just, just trying to destroy this country. You better be ready for it. I suggest people, frankly, arm up in a defensive way. Your Second Amendment rights get prepared because the left is ruthless. They essentially want us dead. They really do. And, and you can see it. Just listen to the speeches at the Democratic National Committee uh, convention. You'll see the, the hatred that they have for conservatives, libertarians, and people of faith, and even their own, like Robert F. Kennedy Jr., that you know, decide that they're going to go their own way. So let's, uh, you, you know, you mentioned Barack Obama's birth certificate, and I, and I just want to quickly uh, talk about that because, again, I, I don't know if he's from Kenya, et cetera. All I do know is that his parents met at the Kissinger Institute. His white mother did porn out, pornographic photography, okay, um, honey trap anybody. I mean, you get Kissinger that, and then you, you look at the, the way he grew up, he, he wasn't even called Barack Obama. Everybody called him Barry. He was Barry Sotero. He was raised by this other person. I don't know anybody without some weird political or Hollywood well, aspirations at the end of high school and then going into college, it suddenly changes their name back and their candor. Not and, you know, that, obviously, he's lied, about, good. he's lied about his sexual persuasion. He's lied about well, it. Everybody that's a, knows that's obviously crazy. another part of it. You know, you talk about, uh, and I mean, now his, his name is uh, Larry Sinclair. That was out years ago, but even more so, um, you know, whether or not you believe the allegations about Frank Marshall Davis, Barack Obama wrote about him in his book, spoke about him many, many times on stage and his uh, influence. And they happen to look a lot alike and also sound a lot well, alike. Well, here's the difference. Here's the difference between Barack Obama and uh, Kamala is that Barack Obama is exceedingly intelligent. OK, Barack Obama is the architect of the race war that currently is going full steam in the United States. He's the one who started it. He did it in a way that was stealth in many ways. It, it, it took sp it took uh, speed uh, and uh, now is acute. And, you know, so he pitted blacks against whites, women against men, uh, everybody that he could find in a very clever, subtle way. And he is the puppeteer behind the Biden-Harris regime. His people remain in control. He's the kingmaker. And now he's going to speak tonight at the Democratic National Convention. He's the one who is still president of the United States, not Kamala Harris, because, you know, although Trump has to be a little more subtle in the way he talks, I mean, she's she is dumb as a rock. I mean, that's it's well established. Well, so, I mean, again, the, the way that they treat, I don't know if you saw that bit between her and Walls with the Doritos and the corn nuts, but these people aren't even human. They can't navigate a convenience store. Like if you saw that bit, first of all, they shot it twice, but he, she asks for corn nuts. He hands her Doritos as she takes, this is exactly what I wanted. It's, it's really a metaphor for the guy. First of all, they're not getting Doritos or corn nuts. Nobody's even well, paying for those things. No one's eating them in the car. These are, they, they can't go into a convenience store without a film crew and aides and three takes. Like that's the, the unreality of the post-truth world we're in. Well, and if you think she's banned, this guy, Tim Walsh, her vice presidential pick, I mean, you talk about freaks. I mean, my God. And I had to laugh when Jesse Waters said, you know, I don't, I watch all the networks because I want to see what they're saying. Okay. I don't, frankly believe any of them but he made a comment he said my god how did she come up with someone that actually looks older than joe biden <laughs> you know, so, you know, <laughs> uh, so you gotta laugh but the, the guy is he's just weird i mean th that is even more frightening than kamala harris and give her credit because in the last three and a half years she's had a couple facelifts she's made herself look better she's dropped weight uh she's learned how to project she is extremely charismatic i mean you have to give her credit for that but there's nothing behind it. You know, it's it's vacuous in that brain. 
and so stupid that she even jumped the gun and proposed price controls, you know, in effect, a, a socialist communist system to control prices. And I remember when I was a young kid, my family went out of business. They were in the pork business in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And Nixon put in price controls. The Alan Greenspan, who, who frankly was a moron, uh, put that in. And the price that farmers would sell hogs to my family in their meatpacking plant was not frozen, but the price that my family could then sell to the chain stores and retailers was, and my family went bankrupt. So this is what happens with those kinds of things. But she's so stupid that she proposes this. She's kissing the behind of the ultra left, people like Tim Walz, the vice president. And let's hope that the American people, and I don't tell people who to vote for, but I hope that they're well informed as to what we're getting into, because that is a, a formula for moving into socialism and communism. And last point here. I want people to read the book Atlas Shrug by Ayn Rand because it's extremely accurate. Written in 1958 uh, when communism was on the rise. Now it's actually here. Uh, she predicted exactly where we are today with price commissions, truth commissions like George Orwell in 1984. They are moving to total government control of our lives. And when that happens, and when the American people, frankly, who are asleep at the switch right now, not your supporters, not mine, but when they finally figure it out, uh, we are going to be in a bloody revolution, and I pray that won't happen. So this is what we are trying to avoid at Freedom Watch with our citizens' grand juries and our legal proceedings, which are by the people, which are not relying on the established law enforcement uh, community, other than to, to arrest those who are ultimately convicted. So... Well, well well, Larry, let me say are. this. Uh, you know, I, I have never been a uh, revolutionary. Uh, I certainly don't want a bloody one. I've always considered myself a reformationist, getting back to the Constitution, Bill of Rights, checks and balances, uh, a real fourth estate, et cetera. I don't know if we can get there uh, the nonviolent way, but I certainly hope so. What would you like to leave the audience with? And one more time, how can they support you? Well, we really need the help right now. You know, when I ran for the Senate in Florida, I always had a hard time asking for money. OK, you know, I'm, I'm very independent, but I've got to right now because the fundraising has been siphoned off by the Republican establishment in particular that promises balanced budgets, reforming Obamacare, that they're going to solve international crises, which they don't. They don't even tell us about it, you know, until it happens like Ukraine and uh, elsewhere and Afghanistan. So we really need the help financially. If you can go to freedomwatchusa.org, contribute to our cause, tax deductible. We need more lawyers, more paralegals, more office space. But you need your own Justice Department. The Justice Department today under Biden and Harris is a Gestapo. And you know we represent some J6 peaceful protesters. This was an effort to quell the dissent, to scare people. And so far it's succeeded, but I'm not scared. And we must rise up and we must not be afraid because we're not going to have a, a country left, not just for ourselves, but for our children and grandchildren. And if you're young or middle-aged, you better rise up too. You know, I have people, Jason, in my own family, and not my immediate family, but extended family, who say to me, Larry, you know, why don't you just retire? Why don't you put your feet up on the, on the coffee table, you know, have a drink? I don't drink, but <laughs> and let the Republicans do it. I find that so offensive because Republicans have done little to nothing. And look at yesterday, the report on Biden's crime family taking bribes. It just, they did it right before the convention. It's just for public relations. It's just to raise money. They made no effort to impeach him. They made no effort to really hold him accountable. This is all a dog and pony show. It's become a Republican money raising, racketeering enterprise. And the Democrats, they're pure evil. They are pure evil to the left, but the Republicans, they're simply the masters of fundraising and, and frankly, prevarication and, and deception of our own people. Well, let me just say this, Larry, you know, uh, I couldn't agree more. I've hated both parties for some time. This conversation has been a pleasure. Uh, I hope that you come back. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back. We've got Kara Dansky on the other side. You're not going to want to miss it. More making sense of the madness after this.
What if this happened to you when you're alone? Or what if it happened here? With MedGuard Alert, you're never alone. You can connect with medical professionals anywhere, anytime. And now MedGuard is introducing our exclusive new CareWatch. If you need help quickly, use it from anywhere to contact medical professionals. No cell phone required. The CareWatch is not only a life-saving medical alert device, it's a revolutionary health monitoring system that checks your blood pressure, heart rate, oxygen saturation, and much more. And here's the best part. If you have Medicaid, you may qualify to get your care watch for free. The care watch is only available through MedGuard Alert. Call us right now. We have monitoring programs starting as low as a dollar a day. The call is free. Activation is free. Shipping is free. And no contract is required. Remember, with Medicaid, you may qualify to get your care watch for free. Don't wait. Call us to get your care watch right now. Operators are standing by. I don't know about you, but I have to have that cup of coffee in the morning. And Kingdom Cup is mold-free, it is pesticide-free, and it is organic. It's got this flavor that is delicious. You don't even have to put cream or sweetener in it. Why do we go with the bean form, the whole bean? Because ultimately the powder form is the one that gathers the most moisture. And that means the more potential mold development. This is actually organic mold-free certified. That's important because ultimately people drink coffee. It's cultural. And so we try to uh, meet the culture where it is and create a healthy alternative. Make the healthy choice for you and your family. Try mold-free, pesticide-free, and it's organic. Delicious Kingdom Cup coffee. And it's available now at the Patriot TV store. Go to patriot.tv and click on store. You'll find Kingdom Cup Coffee in the health and wellness section. Order Kingdom Cup Coffee at the Patriot TV store now. And we are back. We are joined by women's rights activist and author Kara Dansky. She has recently wrote a uh, open letter to Kamala Harris uh, about the trans agenda that is affecting so many families across the country, uh, country and, and really the world. Um, so, Kara, first of all, why did you decide to write this letter and where do you think we are with this agenda? So thanks for having me on. I decided to write the letter because last November I published a book called The Reckoning, How the Democrats and the Left Betrayed Women and Girls. And this entire book is written from a leftist feminist perspective. I am a lifelong Democrat. The only time I've not been a Democrat is when I was a registered Green in California. And your listeners may not be aware that there are rank and file Democrats all over this country who are completely fed up with what Democratic Party leadership is doing on this topic. They write to their elected officials all the time. They are dismissed. They are ignored and they're fed up with it. So I published that book last November and, you know, it was sort of a, a call to the Democrats, you know, hey, get a grip. Stop promoting the idea that sex isn't real. And of course they didn't listen. And so a couple of weeks ago, I just thought, all right, Kamala, the DNC is coming up. This is your chance. And I published that open letter and I'm glad I did. Although I am not hopeful that she will actually do what I ask her to do, which is stand up at the DNC and say that a woman is an adult human female. Uh, but nonetheless, Martina Navratilova tweeted it to her several hundred thousand followers calling on the Democrats to do the same thing I'm calling on the Democrats to do. And a lot of people saw that letter. And my hope is that it will encourage and inspire Americans across the political spectrum to just say the truth right out loud that no men are women and no women are men. Uh, where are we with the issue? Well, yeah, it is an issue globally. Uh, it is mostly leftist parties all over the world who are pushing it and feminists on the political left are pushing back. And, um, you know, we could talk a little bit about recent uh, Supreme Court decision involving Title IX if, you, if you'd like to go there, but I'll leave it at that for now. No, we can definitely get into it, but, but let's talk about the issue. First of all, there is the issue of acknowledging reality and human biology, uh, but then there's the really greater issue that your children can go to an institution that ultimately, unless you have um, special circumstances that you can do the homeschooling, it is mandated where now you don't have parental rights, where all of a sudden uh, a child who I would say in the same age range when I was a kid, you could say you wanted to be an astronaut or a professional wrestler or whatever, and people realized, hey, 
you're a kid, you're impressionable, these things are going to change, okay? There were a thing called fads just on that level. Now, if they identify as a girl and they're a biological boy, if they're fluid, if they're non-binary, if there's one of the many other things that are being added onto this, that is not discouraged. It is encouraged, enabled, and kept from the parents. This, to me, is completely insane, and it certainly transcends uh, the left or the right to really a human issue, no? Absolutely. And in one of my chapters of the book, The Reckoning, I talk about the schools and I begin that section by saying, if you are a parent of a school age child, please put down this book right now and either ask your child if he or she has heard the word transgender in school. Uh, and if your child's not in earshot, please write an email message to your child's teacher and ask them what they're teaching about it. And if you're not prepared to do that, just write an email about anything and see if it comes back. And if the email comes back with pronouns in the signature, you know that your child is being exposed to the dangerous, manipulative idea that sex isn't real. This is a huge issue all over the country. It is a huge issue. And one of the other things, again, I've been politically homeless for decades, but I will say that when we talk about traditionally um, parents being more involved with their kids in that regards, it, it used to be the left. It's same thing on the vaccine issue. And, and it seems over the last, I don't know, five to 10 years, it's kind of flipped and been inverted and also been highly politicized in that regards where it, it was kind of in the shadows and whispered. You know, it, even if you were an advocate for, for such things, it wasn't like it was this culture war. I feel like that has been encouraged. And I think in part, it's been encouraged to discourage people from thinking that people like you exist. You know, uh, you know, my friends from high school and cop LARP, the vast majority are leftists with views that I may, may not agree with, et cetera. But they certainly want to be involved in their children's life. And they certainly believe that we certain we shouldn't be giving up uh, drugs that will permanently alter their biology or surgeries to children, they should at least be adults if they're going to make these decisions. Right. Uh, so I try to make the point in the book that the Democratic Party leadership wants everyone to think that supporting so-called gender identity or trans is progressive. There's nothing progressive about it. This is the most sexist, homophobic, authoritarian, nonsensical movement I have seen in my adult lifetime. And you're right, it didn't used to be like this, but there's nothing progressive about it. Uh, the Democratic Party is pushing the idea that there is a coherent category of people called transgender. It's just not true. They've created a civil rights movement out of absolutely nothing. All human beings are either female or male, all eight billion of us, including those among us who have differences of sexual development, which we could talk about if you'd like. It's a legitimate medical issue, but that legitimate medical issue has absolutely nothing to do with so-called trans. We got to take a break before we do, and then we can get into that issue. And uh, I believe Title 19, what you said uh, prior, uh, where can people find your work and support you? Thanks. I am on X, formerly Twitter, at at Kdansky, and I have a Substack, which is karadansky.substack.com. Thanks so much for, for asking. Absolutely. We're going to take that break. We're going to come back with Kara Dansky. Uh, more Making Sense of the Madness after this. Throughout history, the spirit of patriotism has prevailed. The battles may have changed, but the values remain the same. Today, in 2024, we find ourselves at a pivotal moment where the call for unity, freedom, and a better future echoes louder than ever. For more than 10 years, Patriot Mobile has been committed to supporting the values that make our nation great. With affordable plans and reliable nationwide coverage, Patriot Mobile is not just a wireless service. It's a call to action for those who believe in the American dream. Because this year is not just any year. It's the most important year since our nation's founding. Choose a wireless carrier that shares your values. Choose Patriot Mobile.
We've learned through the pandemic, we can never be caught unprepared again. And so many Americans, when COVID hit, they had nothing in the house. Stores were shut down and, and doctor's offices were shut down. And even if doctors prescribed drugs from hydroxychloroquine, ivermectin, pharmacists wouldn't fill the prescriptions. That was a nightmare. Now the situation is much worse. We have these horrible supply chain problems. In our emergency medical kit at the wellness company, we have eight prescription drugs that are all potentially life-saving. Most people who died with COVID, they died in the hospital because they didn't receive early treatment. Every American family should have one of these. I can tell you the wellness company kit is the answer We are back. Final segment. We got about six minutes left in the show. What topics do you want to hit? Okay, because I'm going to give you the floor here. And really, again, we're hoping to bring more people's attention to this issue and that it is not a left or right issue. And quite frankly, the things that are happening are not only horrific on a moral level, they are criminal. So I just want to say quickly, you mentioned being politically homeless. I will say in my work on this topic, I have made common cause with a lot of conservative leaning Republican women. We do this bipartisan work and reaching across the aisle and working with these women's organizations. You know, we disagree on a lot of topics, but working together on this topic has been some of the most rewarding advocacy I've ever done in my life. And I also just want to mention that I have made friends with a lot of Republicans in the course of the last few years working on this. And many of my Republican friends are as sick of their party as I am of mine because they don't think Republicans are going far enough to push back on this topic. So I just wanted to mention that. On the topic of people with differences of sexual development, that's a very real thing. It's, a, it's about 0.02% of the population that have uh, what are called differences of sexual development or used to be known as intersex. That's a real medical condition. And the people who have those conditions have to work with their, if their minors, with their parents and their doctors to understand what's going on with them medically. That has absolutely nothing to do with the so-called transgender movement or with so-called gender identity which has no legitimacy whatsoever, no matter what the Democrats in leadership will tell you. Uh, and the leftist political establishment. I'm a former employee of the ACLU where I worked on criminal justice topics. And the ACLU, of course, is completely captured by this topic. I want listeners to understand that there is a vast amount of money behind the topic. You're welcome to go check out the 11th hour blog written by a woman named Jennifer Billick, who has studied the money. I would like Americans to know names like Martine Rothblatt, who was born. Karen, let me stop you. Let me stop you. So important to know about Martine Rothblatt, who wrote about this for many years. In fact, I have her 90s book uh, in front of me, Unzipped Jeans, uh, Baby Making in the New Millennium. And she wrote from transgender to transhuman uh, over a decade ago, as well as a billionaire involved in all sorts of military industrial complex goodies and transhumanism. And Bielik also makes that connection that this is really what it's about. It's not just about this fetish or perversion. They're trying to alter the human species. Continue. Absolutely. Although I will say I will not refer to Martine as she. <laughs> I, I, I cannot use Martin, opposite sex yes. pronouns. Um, gotcha. So Tim Gill, Tim Gill of the Gill Foundation based in Colorado, Rolling Stone magazine has called him a mega donor of the Democratic Party. He will say that he promote so-called LGBTQ uh, initiatives. But if you dig a little deeper, you find that the Gill Foundation solely focuses on the T and the Q. He's doing no gay rights advocacy. John Stryker founded the Arcus Foundation. Same story there. They will tell you that they're fighting for, quote, LGBTQ rights, but they don't do any gay rights advocacy whatsoever. It's solely on the so-called T and the Q. And plenty of lesbians and gay men that I know in my personal life are just as fed up on this topic as I am, because you cannot protect same-sex attraction in the law. Whatever any of your listeners think about same-sex marriage or any other same-sex related topic, from a gay rights perspective, you cannot protect same-sex attraction in the law if you cannot acknowledge that sex is real. So again, this is sexist, homophobic, reality-denying, authoritarian nonsense. And on the authoritarian point, 
If you try to speak up about it as a leftist feminist, you are silenced and threatened with violence and cancellation and worse. So what states is this the most egregious in? And are there any states that are completely safe or safer? Because I think people have to make decisions. If you're not going to homeschool your children and you're going to put them into these public institutions, there is now this risk, especially if you're in a California or even in New York, et cetera, Illinois, which neighbors my state, et cetera. Are there any safe havens? So... It is absolutely true that states like New York, New Jersey, Washington, Oregon, and California are among the worst. But I, but I don't want to emphasize that because this is not just in blue states. A lot of red states and localities have been captured as well. So I just want to make that point. Uh, several states have sued the Biden administration concerning rule changes to Title IX that became effective August 1st. Those are all red states, as you would assume. And seven of them have prevailed. Well, more states than that. Seven district courts have blocked the rule changes from taking effect. These rule changes would redefine the word sex to include gender identity throughout Title IX. Seven district courts blocked them from taking effect, which is great. Some of the states appealed to the circuit courts of appeals, which have upheld those blocks, which is also great. And last week, the Supreme Court ruled that those blocks can stay in place. And so there are essentially 22 states where the Biden administration rewrite of Title IX is currently not in place while litigation is pending. And so we'll see what happens at the Courts of Appeals and in the Supreme Court soon. Kara, we have run out of time. I hope people support your work. Check out The Reckoning, folks. We do it here five days a week. Um, Look, you know the deal. Every topic we talked about today, it's not about left or right. It is always about right and wrong. You know, from what Larry Klayman talked about, via 9-11, COVID-1984, and of course, this transgender slash transhuman agenda. Folks, I love you guys, and I'll see you on the flip side.